Welcome to this broadcast. My name is Paul. I'm in Peterhead in Scotland today. We are in Ezekiel chapter 10. Do so trust my listeners as well. I was just uh, pondering there um, the proximity of the times we live into uh, the end of the rule of mortals and the end of the rule influence of demons over mortals. The great sovereign councils of Adonai, Havar Elohim, um, the great wisdom, the great loving kindness, the great covenant, the great atonement, the great finished work of eternal redemption. I was just pondering how uh, mortals, it is said of when uh, Jonah, and there's an entire series of podcasts on this channel covering the whole book of Jonah, when Jonah fled from his call and uh, eventually went to Nineveh, Nineveh, um, in Syria, which was a ginormous city, but then again, by today's standards, I suppose it was, it was certainly a very large city even then. Um, and they repented. It says that they didn't know their left hand from their right hand. <clears throat> you know, and you, I suppose you could say they didn't know whether they were gas or electric. Um, and, um, you know, part of the human condition is, uh, well, ignorance and uh, foolishness and, and delusion, self-deception, self-sentiments. Um, and so God is rich in mercy, wherewith he loved us and gave his own son for us, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So I think it's important to bear in mind when studying uh, these writings uh, that, uh, you know, for persons that have their faith and trust in the risen Christ God, uh, that are trusting in the finished work of eternal redemption, the everlasting righteousness that is the person of the Son of God, when they're trusting in the salvation of all mankind, Jesus, um, then they have peace, pardon, power, immortality, and everlasting joy forever, you see. So it's very important to, to understand, um, you know, that, that, that much of what we're reading uh, is towards all mankind. Um, however, there are only two types of human being, those that make up the Lamb's wife, those that are redeemed, that are divinely elected, divinely predestined, divinely foreknown and justified and glorified through the atonement. And then there are those that are not, um, that will be found guilty of the body and blood of Jesus, that will be found responsible for the sufferings of Christ Jesus 2,000 years ago. Just two types of human being, uh, the cleansed and the healed and the pardoned and those responsible for the agonies and sufferings of the Son of God. So it's a great thing, friends, to stand in the whole council of Yahweh, our Elohim, to be both assured uh, and uh, set right in relation to the demise of the wicked, um, those that, uh, that go against Christ Jesus, that deny the Son of God, that deny the truth, uh, suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Those that are not faithful or holy or righteous. Um, and so, yes, two types of human being on this planet. Those that are cleansed and those that are responsible for the sufferings of Christ. So today, friends, we are in Ezekiel chapter 10. So um, a brief recap in chapter eight, we had Ezekiel seeing the wickednesses of mortals, the various fornications and violences and wickedry and drunkenness and revelry and oppression. Um, in chapter nine, we have the Lord Jesus uh, writing the, the sign of the cross upon the foreheads of those that sighed and wept for the abominations of mankind, those that entered into the feelings of God, the heart of God, the mind of God, um, those that uh, had intercessory feeling into the switch matters, that was a sign of their election, that they were compassionate and, and thoughtful. Um, and of course, the Lord Jesus, the man clothed in linen, with the writers in corn by his side. Um, he, he writes 
the mark on their foreheads. Um, and if we turn to, uh, I suppose this is an addendum to, to the previous broadcast. If we turn to Revelation chapter, I think it's chapter three, let's have a look. You will see the Lord Jesus says to those that overcome, he will write his name and his father's name, um, the name of the city of, of Jerusalem from above upon their foreheads, you see. So clearly that's what's in view. Now let's have a look. Here it is. Revelation 3, 1, 2, 3, 12. He that overcomes, him will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, <clears throat> and he shall go no more at all out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name. So I would suggest that the ethos is those <clears throat> that are not under the influence of the doomed, deluded devils, but rather the under the influence of the Holy Spirit, the influence of God and thereby have spiritual insight and understanding into the heart and mind of God concerning sin and iniquity. Ezekiel is very much um, a type of an intercessory prophet, so it's certainly a speciality of Ezekiel is his feelings and understanding of the wickedry to which he preaches against and, uh, and declares the wrath of God against such practices. Um, and he... He, 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 of course, is a type of Christ, and yet in these visions he sees the man clothed in linen, who is assuredly the Son of God, the Lord Jesus, um, you know, writing the election. Um, and in, in chapter 9, it's the, uh, the sign of the cross that he writes upon the foreheads of human beings that enter into God's feelings and feel as God feels concerning circumstances. It's the sign of the cross. It's the sign of the Tav, which is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. But in Revelation 3, uh, it's the Father's name and the name of the New Jerusalem. So it's quite interesting, friends, to, to think that uh, these persons uh, upon whom the man with the writers in corn in Ezekiel 9 um, writes, uh, the mark upon their forehead, these men were in Jerusalem. In Revelation 3, it's, it's the name of the new Jerusalem that's written upon their forehead. Um, and then, of course, at the end of chapter 9, you have the feelings of Ezekiel concerning the sorrows of the mortals that are under wrath and death and destruction upon them. Um, because the land is full of perverseness. The land is full of blood. Well, that's violence, and wickedry of all types, you see. You think of all types of wickedry, friends. You think of, for example, uh, the fact that everyone in Britain is paying five or six times what they should be for gas and electricity at the present time, sheer wickedness. The fact that everyone's paying five or six times for petrol and diesel what they should be, sheer wickedness. The fact that the government's trying to stop people using... Uh, Petrol or diesel cars when electric cars are a hideous uh, delusion, you know, uh, and uh, not to get sidetracked, but it's perverseness. That's what it is. Uh, the whole electric vehicle thing is just a shambolic, wretched delusion. Uh, and, uh, you know, other perverseness is government manipulation. We see, for example, little children talk desperately wicked things in schools they're taught that masturbation and uh, sodomy uh, males with males working out which is unseemly is normal and okay that for a boy to pretend to be a girl and a girl to pretend to be a boy uh, followed up by chemicals there was a, an article in the newspaper the day before yesterday a girl in australia a teenage girl in australia had both her breasts removed and such, such is the delusion that her parents thought this were wonderful. And of course, such is the wickedry of governments now that if the parents don't go along with their children's uh, delusions that, that a male is a female and a female is a male, then they can land in court or have their children taken off. That's how serious 
the government wicked is in the current days we live in, friends. Of course, there's been many teachers and many social services persons sacked because they everyone who works for the governments, whether, and that's a lot of people, friends, for any of my listeners that are not in the know concerning how governments and countries work. That's everyone from uh, hospital staff, office staff in hospitals, everyone to do with local councils of any type, everyone to do with social services of any type, everyone to do with the fire service or the ambulance service, anyone who's a social worker of any type, including all the various office structures behind all these systems, anyone who's on the government payroll, street sweepers, anyone, um, police, anyone to do with the police, they are commanded to tell lies. If they see a man pretending to be a woman, they are commanded to call that person a woman, even though it's a man. And if they see a woman that's pretending to be a man, and that woman says, you must address me as a man, they must address her as a man, or they lose their jobs. They might get two or three warnings, but they get sacked. And there's been thousands of cases across the world in recent years of good men and women that have lost their jobs because they're commanded to tell lies. Now, these are very serious things, friends, but this is the world we live in at the present time. This is reality. And all these things are perverse, as you see. Uh, and that's not to mention, uh, you know, all the sexual perverseness. I mentioned in the previous podcast, a couple of podcasts ago, that the two thirds of the men in the city of Tel Aviv in Israel uh, openly profess to being sexual deviants. They take pleasure in anally penetrating men uh, in, in their posterior. Um, and they are quite happy to announce that. Two thirds of the men, that's two out of every three men in Tel Aviv. Yes, it's not the Holy Land. It's the place where the Lord was crucified and rejected. It's the unholy land, spiritually, Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, so Ezekiel 9, you see, is completely up to date, you see, friends. This is the point I'm making. The reason why the wrath of God is upon the earth and accomplishing at this present moment is because the cities are full of perverseness and the land is full of blood. And, and men say, oh, the Lord doesn't see. Well, this is what God says. My eye won't spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense their ways upon their head. And then, of course, believers say, oh, well, the Lord, we know Jesus, we know Jesus. Well, this is what Jesus says to God. I've done as you've commanded me. It's a subjection of the Son to God the Father, the mystery of the Godhead. So Christ and the Father are one. You see. So, friends, that brings us to chapter 10, Ezekiel chapter 10. And I looked, and behold, in the expanse that was over the head of the cherubim, there appeared above them, as it were, a sapphire stone as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. And he spoke to the man clothed with linen and said, come in between the wheels under the cherub and fill the hollow of your hands with coals of fire from between the cherubim and scatter them over the city. And he went in my sight and the cherubim stood upon the right side of the house when the man went in and the cloud filled the inner court. And the glory of Jehovah, the Kavod HaYehovah, mounted up from the cherub and came over the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud and the court was full of the brightness of Jehovah's glory. And the sound of the wings of the cherubim was heard to the outer court as the voice of the almighty God, when he speaketh. And it came to pass when he'd commanded the man clothed with linen, saying, take fire from between the wheels, from between the cherubim. Then he went in and stood beside the wheel. And the cherub stretched forth his hand from between the cherubim, under the fire that was between the cherubim, and took and put it into the hands of him that was clothed with linen, 
who took it and went out. And there appeared in the cherubim the form of a man's hand under their wings. And I looked and behold four wheels beside the cherubim, one wheel beside one cherub and another wheel beside another cherub. And the appearance of the wheels was as the look of a chrysolite stone. And as for their appearance, they four had one likeness, as if a wheel were in the midst of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides. They turned not as they went, but to the place whither the head looked, they followed it. They turned not as they went, and their whole body and their backs and their hands and their wings and the wheels were full of eyes round about, in them four and their wheels. As for the wheels, they were called in my hearing Galgal. Every one had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub, and the second face the face of a man, and the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. And the cherubim mounted up. This was the living creature that I saw by the river Kibar. But when the cherubim went, the wheels went beside them. And when the cherubim lifted up their wings to mount up from the earth, the same wheels also turned not from besides them. When they stood, these stood. And when they mounted up, these mounted up with them. For the spirit of the living creature was in them. And the glory of Jehovah departed. The Kavod HaYahuwah departed from over the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubim. And the cherubim lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight. When they went out and the wheels were beside them, and they stood at the door of the east gate of Jehovah's house and the Glory of the God of Israel, the Kavod Vaha Elohayim Hayasharel was over them above. This is the living creature that I saw under the Elohayim Hayasharel, the God of Israel, by the river Kibar. And I knew they were cherubim. Each one had four faces and every one four wings. And the likeness of the hands of a man was under their wings. And as for the likeness of their faces, they were the faces which I'd seen by the river Kibar. Their appearance and themselves, they went every one straight before them. Well, friends, um, it's almost something of a relief um, is, is chapter 10, with the exception of the, uh, the calls of fire. And the whole thing is, is almost a relief between um, 9 and 11. Of course, 9-11, uh, of course, is, uh, is, is the emergency number for the American uh, persons to ring if there's an emergency and in the middle is, uh, is is number 10 here and it's the angelic operations the tender mercies the goodnesses the nature the character the attributes of god the patience of the lord jesus christ the tender mercies of god um, and of course uh, god remembers mercy in the midst of wrath uh, and these uh, four living creatures are of course well, you, you only really get them in Revelation and Ezekiel. And if you listen to the first uh, few podcasts on this book of Ezekiel, we looked rather closely at these four living creatures um, that Ezekiel sees in chapter one. And here they are again, and it has to do with the nature, character, attributes, and heart and mind of God in operation upon the earth. So it's almost like the angelic operations, the cherubim, the living creatures, the wings, and the hand of God 
underneath the wings of the angels. It's a great thing to think of the sovereignty of God, friends. Well, we'll be back soon with another broadcast. Stay strong, uh, persevere, endure, stay the course, trust the process, friends. The steps of a good person are ordered by Yahovah. Uh, many other thoughts in a man's heart. But the counsel of Yahovah Elohim, that doth stand.